before we get started on this project, um, I wanted to give a shout out to where I kind of got the idea from. Um, a, a fellow YouTuber, uh, NerdForge, actually made something very similar that I that I kind of borrowed some of the ideas from. Um, he released the files on his uh, on Thingiverse, but I ended up using some modified files from uh, now another shout out Patrick the Tech Guy. You use a glass bed on your 3D printer and get the get the ultra smooth surface. And you can just put down a thin layer of plastic for the translucent effect. In addition, his also have uh, mounting brackets and also brackets to hold it together. So, he, I mean, the, the files are phenomenal. Um, I'll, ha I'll link those down below, obviously. So that way you can make them at home if you want to. Uh, but I just wanted to give a shout out to those guys before I get started. What's up, guys? In today's video, we'll be doing something a little different than uh, than your standard sublimation videos. We're going to make an, uh, an RGB LED uh light thing similar to the nano leaf it's gonna be a do-it-yourself version of the nano leaf um, it's called the hexa leaf um, I, honestly i didn't create the files i'll go ahead and link those in the description down below uh, mad props to the original creator of it uh, they're perfect they work as is just fine um, but my version will be built with off-the-shelf components really simple to do with a little soldering a little hot glue works pretty well but without further ado um, this is how you do it and we're going to be going from this to this so if you want to see a cheap way to do it yourself um, go ahead and continue watching the video if you, if you like the content uh, feel free to subscribe uh, drop a like I really appreciate it so here's how you do it all right now let's go over the tools you'll need you'll need uh, some some wire cutters I use these that come with my 3d printer to uh, cut the LED strip part very nice um, wire strippers You'll need a decent soldering iron, a hot glue gun, uh, some solder. This is the kind that I use, nothing special. Just rosin core, nothing special. Uh, but yeah, that's all the tools you'll need to get this going. All right guys, so let's go ahead and get cracking on this. Um, the first thing you'll need, obviously, is these 3D printed parts. Uh, this is one without the wires. I went ahead and did some of these. It was before I decided I was going to make a YouTube video about it, so I went ahead and kind of pre-wired four of those. But you'll need these 3D printed pieces. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll link the 3D print file below. It was uh, something I found on Thingiverse. I'm not the original Arthur, uh, so I'd like to give credit to that guy. That's amazing. Um, you'll need some LED strips that fit. Let's show you how these things fit. They're, they have double-sided tape and they fit right along the edge just like that. Just like that. Nice and neat. And I'll, I'll, what I'll do, I'll go ahead and show you um, some photos. I'll edit those in real quick and we'll show you exactly how those fit. So th this is exactly how, how it works. All right, um, you see you need LED strips. You'll need a some kind of controller to control these with. Um, I'll drop a link to what I use. What I use turned out pretty well. It's a uh, a generic um, Alexa smart home Wi-Fi controller. It came from banggood.com. I'll drop a link below for it. Let's see. The very next thing we'll do, we'll go ahead and get all this cut into uh, segments. So what you do is you just find something that'll work for you. Find the length. Um, just make one and then do all the other ones same length. So there we go. There's two. We'll go ahead and make another one from this. Uh, let's see. Where's the end? These things get like to get curled up so bad. We'll zoom. We'll change that a little bit. There we go. They like to get curled up so easily. There we go. That's right at one of the ones that, uh, man, I, ha I always have problems anytime I cut on that. So we're going to try to avoid that. We're going to go one further and just cut one off. That's fine. Okay. 
Then we'll just cut one off. Yeah. We'll do that. Because last time I cut right on one of those circuits, I, I had bad times with it. So we'll go ahead and just cut this. We'll go ahead and cut right here. And what I do is I just take them and just, uh, just snip. I say that and they don't come apart. There we go. You can just cut them right apart and no problem. So that can be on the trash. Go ahead and measure out some other ones. We'll go ahead and take this one. Well, it fell off. See if it's long enough. Yep, we can go right here with it. And you can see you can get a nice clean cut and something fairly easy to solder to. It's not that bad. And I think this is going to be three of them, three of the four that we need. Because we only need four pieces, so we'll go ahead and get that. So here's three all equal lengths. So let's go ahead and create a fourth one. I bought way too much LED wire. Now that I look back at it. But, you know. Cool. There's another one. So it looks like we got all our wire cut. Alright, so now we can go ahead and uh, get the next one going. I'm going to make these in like the shape of almost like an S. Of course for Southpaw. So we're going to see if we can get that to do right. And these things are kind of tricky sometimes to get them to do right, to get the wire fed through, but you want to feed the wire through. And then, I highly recommend printing it with, uh, that's bad. We don't need our hot glue gun to fall off, that's really bad. I'm gonna scoot all my crap down a little bit. All right, well, anyway, what you do is uh, there is a, a little clip that you 3D print with it to clip them together. So you just push them together, use your clip, and clip them bad boys together. Now I'm gonna see if I can, I usually do that afterwards because you'll want a little maneuverability for the wire. Otherwise you'll have a really bad time. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, uh, let's see. So the next one is going to be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this one's going to need to go right here. I know you can't see that, but this one's going to need to go over here. So we're going to have to uh, kind of maneuver it based on that. So the first step is usually to just cut the wire how you how you think it should go. Usually I, I cut enough where I have a little slack to uh, to play with because it can be a pain in the butt to uh, to solder these guys. And of course you always have the thing unplugged and stuff while you're soldering or while you're trying to wire it. That way, you, I mean it's low voltage; it won't do anything, but just you know, good habits. And I usually just take my fingers and just kind of peel these wires apart a little bit, make it a little easier because they, they don't exactly line up right. And the wire, I bought this wire as well to try to help with the wiring process. See if I can find some extra. Yeah, 
it's just a little four strand RGB wire. And what I'm using is 26 gauge, so we'll just we'll just strip out 26 gauge wire. Just enough to solder really is all you want. Just a little bit. And of course, try to keep everything nice and tidy while you're doing it and make it a little cleaner. All right, we get our solder. I usually put down something to uh, to avoid the solder going directly on the into this because if it burns it, it's it looks horrible. So usually I put something down to kind of protect it, just to catch solder or anything really. So we'll go ahead and pretend these wires real quick. So we'll run out a little bit of wire. Get our soldering iron. Let's clean up our wires a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this with a little, a little bit of solder. That way it'll uh, be a little easier to wire when we do our LED light. And I usually use a pair of helping hands to get that. I usually just clamp it right on the LED right there just like that. And I always test the, test the LED first before I go and solder all of it. Um, let's actually switch ends because the it's going to be much easier to have a 12 volt which is the black wire on top actually i kind of should pretend those as well the connectors And I'll take this out of the mount so you can see what it looks like when you pre tin it. There we go. Nice, neat connectors. All right, now that we have that bridge uh, solder joint fixed, we know that uh, we know that the green actually equals red. So we'll go ahead and make that solder connection real quick. We know that uh, the R is blue, uh, the B is green, and the green is red, which is really stupid. Okay, now we'll go ahead and uh, turn this off. And we'll go ahead and make the other two connections now that we know everything that is everything. It's so dumb how some of these wires are. Really freaking dumb. Alright. So we're going to use something to hold these with while we do it. Now we do the blue one. I don't know why that's so hard to see. There we go. It's so hard being left handed and trying to do this all backwards. Let's uh, use that. So I'll give this a quick test and I uh, will be right back.
All right, guys, the moment of truth. Uh, let's see how let's see how this thing works. Let's uh, let's plug it up and see what we have. Everything should be wired correctly. I've been testing it kind of as I got, as I've been going. So let's see if what we got. Whoa. <laughs> There we go. And you can see that uh, all eight panels are working just fine. We'll go ahead and pan this and get a better angle of the other two. But yep, that's, uh, that's a wrap. We'll go ahead and get this thing installed and, uh, and we'll do one more video, but everything's working great.